Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, we did not get the chance to get this video done on the live recently, and I wanted to go ahead and take care of it because it was very important and it was relevant to updating Linux Mint systems and dealing with issues that I've had in the past. So, of course, we're talking about cleaning out old kernels. So the problem here is sometimes when you're updating, and I found that this is applicable on Ubuntu systems, and it's also ap applicable on uh, Linux Mint, and basically anything based on Ubuntu, where the boot sector has gotten a little bit too small for the size of the current kernels. And so what ends up happening is the boot sector is filling up, and rather than throwing an error on the installer, it just proceeds on during the installation process, and it shouldn't be doing that. However, if you do not catch it, then you reboot your system, your system will be attempting to boot itself into a kernel that is faulty and your system will fail to boot. Now you should be able to access the older kernels by getting into the grub menu and accessing an older version of the kernel. However, I ran into a case last year where, or maybe as earlier this year, where I couldn't get into that grub menu. I had it set to have a zero timeout and all of the usual tricks like holding shift and a few other options failed to actually give me what I needed to get in there and actually access an old kernel. So I had to figure out how to manually fix the issue. Now, I did an article on that um, back at that time, and you can find that over on the website. Uh, and pardon my ugly layout here. I had to do a lot of big zoom in to get the screen where we could actually read it. But this is fixing SSD encrypted uh, file, encrypted drive, dead grub, and a failed kernel. <laughs> so yeah, this is like Half the time you're like, let's just wipe the system and rebuild it. So I did this whole post and then an accompanying video talking about it. We have a broken kernel. We have a broken grub. We have the NVMe SSD is the type of system. We're running LVM and we have Lux encryption. So I literally threw everything at this and I was able to actually fix this following the various steps on this. Now I do mention up here, I could have saved this. Yes, I was dumb. During the update, I saw in the corner the little notification that said, your boot sector is full. Would you like to investigate? I'm like, nah, I'll take care of that later. And I forgot about it. And I rebooted, and that's what the problem was. That's what led to this article here. But today I want to talk a little bit more about if you're doing an update and you see that warning message, we're going to talk about how you can recover from it. And we're going to go ahead and talk about cleaning out the boot sectors and really what the problem is that I've encountered particularly over on Linux Mint and other Ubuntu systems. To be fair, I've seen it on this particular computer we're recording this on, and I think the reason is because it does have a very small hard drive, only 256 gigabytes on this. I've seen it before on a 32 gigabyte um, thumb drive Linux Mint that I was using in production for a little bit, and I've also seen it on a low disk space uh, Ubuntu server on AWS. All of it caused by the exact same problem, doing regular system updates, was adding new kernels, it was not removing old ones properly, and in the result, the boot sector was completely filled up, and now we have a non-booting system because future kernel updates and installs fail to properly install. The system doesn't know this, and you have instability in your kernel. So we're going to go ahead and talk about this. And lo and behold, I was just dealing with this yesterday on this computer. I went through, I pushed all of the system updates, and I do that so I can test the software. We're actually recording this on the latest version of OBS Studio. We're going to be doing the final edits in the absolute latest version of Kden Live, and we're going to see what the result looks like because I am, so far, I'm really liking what I saw. Well, once I did the PPA for OBS, that 27 sucks. Uh, constant crashes. But 30 so far looks pretty good. But as I was working on this, lo and behold, it's FOSS just did an article about how to free up the boot partition in Linux. Now, I didn't actually see this article, which is actually, actually, this is from July. Uh, but I didn't actually see this article, but I saw it when I was, he was either doing research today, looking at this, or maybe I saw it on going to their site, because they don't do a ton of updates on their regular site. Uh, and I actually knew to do many of these 
Um, and I'll go ahead and walk through which one of these worked in my situation here on Linux Mint and which ones did not. And so over here, method one is using apt auto remove. So apt auto remove is supposed to be removing automatic packages that were installed as you installed software. See, apt is supposed to go in and look for the dependencies and install software that uh, is required for things you're implicitly installing. But when you uninstall things, it doesn't always implicitly remove those. Auto remove is supposed to go through the system, look for everything that's not being used and take it out, including old kernel versions and old kernel header versions. Apt auto remove did work on my AWS servers. It did not work on this particular Linux Mint computer. Uh, both times I tried it. Now, Linux Mint has an extra option inside of its upgrade manager, which allows you to toggle a button and it will periodically remove old unused versions of kernels. And to be sure what we are actually talking about, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the Linux kernel view here in Linux Mint. And hopefully my desktop view works. Booyah, it works. Look at that. All right, so when we have Linux here, you see I have kernel 5.15 is installed, but you'll see this 5.15.025, 020, uh, 72, 073, 075. These are old versions of the kernel, and these ones here are coming out and installing as the period of time goes through. Now, the only one on this system is this, but if I start in with 83 and I do system updates, it might very well then install 84, but it keeps 83 here. 86, but then it keeps 83 here. In the upgrade manager here, then what should happen if we hit our uh, preferences correctly, there is an option down here for automation and it's going to automatically remove obsolete kernels and dependencies. For whatever reason, in my circumstance, it was not actually doing that. And in response of that not not actually doing that, what was ended up happening is I would have those old kernels there. And even when I went into that kernel manager and I specifically opted to remove a kernel, so going back into the Linux kernels here, uh, I had, uh, this was before I did the update, I had 5.4 in here. I clicked on this guy here. I hit remove the kernel. I hit it either from remove over here or I hit remove kernels down here. I opted to remove 5.4, but 5.4 was not actually removed from the system. It no longer appeared in this screen, but if I went into the file system here and I found my uh, boot sector, I still was able to see the the image 5.4 was still in here. I actually had to manually remove it. Now, the article that we're talking about is going to get to this in a moment. The point is auto remove and the Linux kernel manager on Linux Mint is supposed to take care of those, but for some reason it is not in my particular system layout. All right, so uh, method two is removed unused kernels uh, manually if auto remove did not work. Now there's a GUI tool for this. And if we go down, here is their GUI tool. Uh, that's, this, is, this is what the current kernel is. And here's the GUI tool. So this is called Stacer. I cannot recommend or not recommend the program. I have not used it. But in theory, Stacer is going to be able to list all of the kernels that we have. So in this image here, we have all these kernels. You can see this is the old version of the kernel, and this is the old version of the kernel. Notice this dot. Uh, dash 7634 and 7642. Those are the old ones that we need to get rid of. And so you can uninstall those selected kernels. Now, again, that is what the Linux Mint kernel manager is supposed to do. And despite it was actually quote unquote removed from the system, it didn't actually show itself as being removed. And for me, I thought that was a little bit on the funky side. Now we can talk about just using the command line. This has ended up what I did. Now in Linux Mint, since I'm more of a GUI guy, I just went into the slash boot as a root user and I just deleted them manually. But what you can do is ls dash boot is going to show us a list of all of our kernels. And then you just find the specific ones you don't need. Now, this one is the one you have to be the most cautious with because if you do the wrong one, you're going to destroy your system. 
Okay. So in my case, I knew that I had ins uninstalled everything dealing with 5.4, despite going back into that folder, 5.4 was still there. So I went into the folder and I manually deleted everything with the 5.4 insignia. And that is what got rid of it. So you can see here that they're removing everything related to 5.4 in this case. Now, it just happens that I was dealing with 5.4 and they were dealing with 5.4. Now, anytime you make any of these manual changes, you have to run this update grub. So update grub is going to go in. It's going to rerun the system, which tells that initial boot up menu which kernels are available. And unless you set it otherwise, the newest kernel is going to be the default install. So if you run into problems, now this is where I had issues on my install yesterday. My boot sector ran out of space. I could no longer get in there and run any of my uh, any of my packages. I could not run the auto remove. I could not install or remove old kernels. You need to run this configure, this dpackage configure dash A. This is going to fix any of the issues. It's going to resolve all those problems. And you're going to want to do that in the event you run into any particular circumstance where something can't be, be otherwise solved. So in summary, your boot sector fills up. You might see that notification about your disk runs out of space, or you might see an error either on your GUI tool or in your terminal command line. This is something I have encountered on Ubuntu-based systems, including Ubuntu on an AWS server and on Linux Mint here as well. Your signs, old versions of kernels are still in there. Your system's failing to boot and the old boot partition runs out of space. So the key thing is here, if you see that boot sector going to zero, you must fix all of these issues before rebooting. Do not reboot your system before fixing these issues, because if you do, you might be booting into an unstable or unbootable computer. All right. So that is what you want to be careful of. Now, I will have both of these articles linked below. This is the It's Foss article with the general tips. If you happen to reboot the system and find yourself in a unstable or unbooting circumstance, then my article on my website at Fixing the SSD Encrypted Dead Grub Failed Kernel, even if you're not running an NVMe, even if you're not running an encrypted drive, this is going to help you solve the issue because in it, as a summary of results, you're booting your system on a live key and then you're using a system called chroot. What that does is that allows you to boot you, you basically take the partition, the boot partition of the hard drive system and you boot it into the active directory of the live key. Then you, uh, this allows you to make any changes to the kernel and allows you to run the grub update as if you were into the system. Then you unmount that system, reboot, and you should have a problem. My article linked down below on switch to linux.com on fixing the SSD encrypted dead grub failed kernel. That is going to fix all those issues and just ignore the steps about the encrypted drive if your drive is not encrypted. So hopefully that was a very helpful video for you on solving this issue and hopefully give you a little bit of the insight and uh, things. You can always, of course, leave some comments on this uh, on this video. And if I have the capability, I will certainly reach back out and uh, give you any extra tips or advice that you need. With that, thank you for watching and we will see you all next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.